What's going on everyone? Steven here. Today I wanted to show those of you who are a bit more advanced how I pulled off this script where I get the base address of each of the fighters on screen here. You can see the two up front, but then if you look in the background, uh, let me just kind of unpause it here. You see the two in the background moving. So that's all four of these characters. So with the enabling of this script, then all of these populate. And from there, I'm able to drill down into all these other things that I have in relation to that. So how did I pull that off? All right, so I've got an example script here that is a copy of this. And I have all these, um, I guess, well, where the base addresses populate, I have that the same as this script. So I didn't want to show the exact code and AOB and all that stuff, but I still wanted the script to function. So this is the one I have enabled, but this is the example I'm going to use. Okay. So basically, um, once again, this is for the more intermediate advanced people. So if you don't know what's going on here, uh, just go check out some previous videos of mine. I'll link to one describing a lot of how I go about my scripts. Um, there's a video where I talk all about that. I'll link to that. But anyway, so here basically the AOB scan that normally I would have had for initially, you know, setting this jumping off point. I comment that out and then I assert that at this location are these bytes. And then if those bytes are at that location, then what I do is I define fighters as being at this location and then I register that as a symbol right so now whenever I just click enable on the script if these bytes are in this location it'll just immediately look at this location it will apply this label and then I register a symbol there and then like everything happens a lot quicker than doing the actual AOB scan right all right so next I allocate memory that I'm going to be using for my code. All right. And then I register that as a symbol so that I can reference it here in these defines. So what I want to do is create my own locations in the allocated memory that I'm going to have these fighter base addresses written to, right? So I'm going to create my own pointer to those. So in this allocated memory, fighters mem, right? Fighters mem plus 500, so it offset 500, that will be where the first address will be written to. And then I register that as a symbol so that it can be referenced outside of the script. So that's where, like here, I'll reference P fighter 1, right? So that's where the base is going to go. And I just do that for each one that I know I want to have, okay? So then for my labels, I have an original code label and then a return label, right? So the original code is what was the original code, which is this one instruction right here. I have a pop F because I'm going to be pushing the flags in a little bit, and then it jumps to return. So, you know, pretty standard stuff with all that, and then the dialloc and the unregister symbols at the end of the script. All right, so the meat of this script, in so far as me writing these things is here okay so what I've done is at each of these locations right I've declared a quad value of zero so that's gonna fill a 64-bit space with zeros right so the first thing that I do is once this code injection happens it's gonna jump to fighters mem once it gets to fighters mem which is my injected code now I'm gonna push flags push the flags register onto the stack to preserve it. First thing I'm going to do is compare the value in the very last one of these. So P fighter four, that's my last one. Okay. I'm going to compare that to zero. If it's not equal, I'm going to jump to original code, which is going to skip all this other stuff here. And it's just going to go straight to original code, right? Because when I first enable the script and the first time this runs, P fighter four or whatever your last one is that you have here 
because you're declaring zero in there, it's gonna be equal to zero. So if it's equal, it's gonna keep going down the line, right? So basically all it's looking for is to see if this one is filled because the way I have the script going, um, the value in this is gonna be zero until it gets filled with something. And then once it is filled with something, the rest of them will have already been filled. Okay, so this is just a nice little check to make to skip all this code once I have filled these addresses um, with the value that I'm interested in. Okay, so that's not necessary. It's just kind of an optimization thing. All right, so here you can see in the comments, skip all the other checks if pfighter4 is filled. That's what that means. All right, here for this comment, check for duplicate values before checking to write. So now what I'm doing is, here's the original instruction, right? RDX plus offset C. I don't remember what's at offset C, but all I know is that this is a shared instruction. And I've identified that all it's accessing are uh, four addresses, right? Those are the four fighters. That's, those are the four things that this instruction is accessing. So. I'm not trying to separate out from anything else. I want all four of the things that this instruction accesses, right? So since I've identified that, I want the base of this structure, right? And the base address of that is in RDX. And then whatever is at offset C or whatever else, that's what I can base all of these other things off of, right? So. P fighter one plus a zero or whatever you know all right so um, RDX is what I'm interested in checking for so is the address in RDX the same as what's in P fighter one if they are the same meaning the address has already whatever address is in RDX it's been written here Okay, so is what's in RDX, is this base address the same as the value inside of here? If it is, jump to original code because we don't want the address to then write to here or here or here because it's, it already exists in one of these, okay? So if the value in here is the same as what we've already written to one of these places, escape out, jump to original code, okay? If it's not the same, then check it in P Fighter 2. Is what's in RDX the same as here? It is. Okay, go to original code. It's not. Well, let's go to the next one here. It'll do that check. Then it does it one more time. So we're checking for duplicates in each of these locations because we don't want to write a duplicate. All right. So now that we've done that made sure we're not going to write the same address to two different locations okay now we begin the checks to write the fighter base addresses okay so once again i'm going to compare what's in p fighter one well i did it with four here but now i'm going to compare what's in p fighter one with zero okay if it's not equal meaning there is something there that's not zero then we're going to jump forward. I'm using anonymous labels here. So, boom, it's going to jump here. Then we're going to compare what's in P Fighter 2 to 0. Is it not equal? Meaning there is something other than the zeros in P Fighter 2. Now we're going to jump at forward again to here. We're going to do that check one more time, right? Jump if not equal to here. Then we'll compare that to zero, which there's still some optimization I can do here, but this is the initial rendition of this I've done. Plus this could be refactored to loop and you could get more fancy with it, but this is just zoop, straight through sort of logic here. Um, jump if not equal to original code, okay? So that's if it's not equal, if there's a value in there. So let's say we compare the value in here to zero and it is equal. Well, this condition won't be satisfied, so then we're going to move what's in RDX into this address, and then we jump to original code, which takes us back here. 
So then we're going to write the value, that base value, into there. Okay? So then for the very last one, when we do that compare, all right, is it zero? If it's not equal, it goes to original code. Otherwise, it writes the base. And then why don't I have jump to original code beneath this? I have it beneath these other ones. That's because the flow of execution will go from here into here. It, it just keeps going, so you don't need to add that jump. If your label here, you know, flows straight from this, that's what it's going to do. Okay, so that's why I formatted it like that. And, uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. Um... At some point, I'm going to go through and refactor this to loop and try to get a bit fancier and more optimal. But, I mean, it's just fine as is. This isn't breaking the CPU by any means. But uh, this should at least get your creative juices flowing for thinking about how to write all the addresses from a shared instruction into individual memory addresses based on what you uh, have allocated and created. All right, so with that, now I can do all the things that I would want to do where I enable this script and move the character around and stuff because all the things I reference are good to go. That's fighter one, let's go to fighter two, move her around and there we go. So. Hope you find that useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. Thanks again for watching, and I will talk to you all in the next one. Take care.